So you drop your first album. Yep. How, how does it do? I mean, it, it was buzzing kind of with that conspiracy, but peop, a lot of people was just rocking with the rhymes and the beats, and that's all I wanted. You know what I mean? I, I still, you know, I was trying to figure out, like, the image. Like, I was just, like, shying away from it, like, yo, no image, no face, whatever. But then people were jumping out the window, like, speculating on who I was, I had to step up, you know what I'm saying? Like, ideally, like, I would've did some MF Doom shit, because that, that's my favorite rapper growing up. Not growing up, but like, after like 17, that like, that's like number one for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. that, the way he played it, you know, being able to maintain like his personal life, because like, I just, I know the whole rap shit is a persona, you know what I'm saying? Like. People get caught up believing like, oh, this is really me. But it's, you know, it's entertainment. So I was just approach I dropped the music like, yo, here's some rhymes and beats. But then people are so fixated on identity, you know what I mean, and nostalgia is, is a bitch, you know what I'm saying? So they, they create all types of, you know what I mean? And then like I came out and some people could say like, you know what, I don't like his face. So I'm not gonna listen to his music or whatever. I don't like that shirt. Like, for me, it's not about any of that. Like, how's the music? Like, how's the rhymes and the beats? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I stay behind the camera because I want people to focus on the person I'm interviewing, not me. Right. You know? Yeah, and I mean, like, people think you, you, you set people up to play themselves, but, like, it's all in, in the person's hands. You know what I'm saying? You're just asking the questions. A motherfucker could be like, yo, nah, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> But yeah, they get, I mean, like, that's the full, happened lots of times. They get like the full indictment and shit. That's on them. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I mean, if you watch the Pee Wee Longway interview, when I, when I look at your music, when I listen to your music, and I look at your album covers and stuff like that, I'm seeing a lot of blue. The color blue seems to be very it's prominent. A, it's a, it's a, it's a nice color, my boy. <laughs> it's a nice color. It ain't nothing like nah, that. Nah, nah, I assume there's a crip thing going on? Nah, just a nice color. Just a nice color? Yeah. No, no cripping going no, on. No, no, no nothing. Just no nice nothing. color, just the scene. Things okay. in the scene, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, growing up in that type of environment, uh, a lot of people start to hustle early. Like, how old were you when you first started hustling? I wasn't hustling, man. I was, I, went, I, I was a school guy, man, going to school, handling my business, man, you know? <laughs> you 100% legal? You were good? Yeah, yeah. Doing everything by the book? Doing it by the book, man. Make sure it happens. Yeah, it's like trying to ban guns. Like, it's like what you do with them, you know what I mean? You can use that to save somebody. Like, All right, you're comparing me to a gun. That's yeah. cool. I'll take that. <laughs> what, what, kind, what kind of gun, man? Like a 45 or something? <laughs> yeah, it'd be a 45. I'll take that. So then your second album drops. Mm hmm. Number one, why'd you call it PAX? That's what the contract said, man. Nah. <laughs> nah, that was like a working title that I had. You know what I'm saying? I had this idea to do like a two-part album. Like one side would be Reds, other side would be Menthols. You know what I mean? It was just like going, going off the cigarette thing from the first record. I had a song called Lucy in the Store with Pennies, where I bought a loose cigarette with pennies when I was real broke. You know what I'm saying? So it was just kind of evolving on that thing. but. Yeah, it was like a working title, and then I got the contract, and it said PAX, and I signed that shit, so. Okay. <laughs> Straight up. Now, now, why does it have the four, five, six dice uh, on top of it? Oh, right. Yeah, well, when I made the first record, I funded that playing CeeLo with my mans in the staircase. It got real intense. I got my first check for rap. Like, they used uh, some, some whack-ass song I did in, like, a YouTube video. They licensed it. I took that bread, took it to the staircase, got some money. Yeah. That's what it okay. Was. Nice. So, the, the one, the, I mean, there's a couple standout songs on here, but, you know, the first one we're going to talk about is the song with Danny Brown. Okay. That, that was dope. Like, how did you get Danny Brown on the song? I was uh, doing some dates in Europe, and uh, we were both playing at the same festival. And it was at like, like the registration booth. When you get in, you get your little whatever, laminates. That's what they call them. So like, 
He just sees me. I have my shirt. He's like, oh, I fuck with you, bro. Straight up. Like, people are scared to show love for some reason. But that dude is 100, you know what I mean? And I respect him. He reminds me of, like, me coming up, you know what I mean? Like, I'm glad he exists and is successful. Like, a dude could really rhyme with getting bread out here. So, salute to him. He's just 100. Stand up, dude. Okay. Uh, Alchemist did some production. Yeah. That's my man. Yeah, we did that at his crib. That that kind of started the project, really. Uh, yeah. The joint Dope, with yeah. Winston Red. Alchemist is incredible, man. I think that's one of the most underrated producers out there. Yeah, that's my guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah I did dope. some stuff for him, like, on, on his uh, Gang Green project. Yeah, we got some stuff. 